Right. Again, I appreciate all of you being here for Bible study tonight. How many of you are here for Sunday morning service? How many of you are here for Sunday morning? Almost all of you are here for Sunday morning service. Well, I want to say a couple of things about the Sunday morning service. Uh, first thing I want to say is the front door, the, the side door survived. Uh, for all those of you who wanted, it's been well checked. It did survive the, night, the morning. Uh, it was questionable, but the side door survived. It, it just opened and it closed. It did what? It didn't fall off the hinges. It's no worse for the wear. It survived. So, and uh, Brother Bruce. in a shop today working, fasting and praying and meditating. I just busted out in, in tongues. At the end of this, it came very emphatic, period. Period. So there's a word for somebody tonight. At the end, when, when you're writing and you get the end of that thought or that thing, it's period, that means it's finished. Yep, so done. Whoever that, thank you. Period. Amen. There's a word for somebody. Amen. Put a period at the end of the sentence. Don't put a comma. Put a period. Yeah. So, I want to just again about Sunday morning. I do appreciate you being a people who love your pastor and allow me to preach what the Lord has laid on me. Uh, I felt like I left everything I had on the stage Sunday morning. I just preached myself, I guess, into a mud puddle, uh, so to speak. And uh, I hope. That uh, for some of you, as I was preaching that, you picked up the burden for the lost, and uh, especially in the midst of this fast. Uh, you'll notice that we turned the numbers on the cross upside down. It's no longer, it was, you know, 500 something, but we were actually counting down. We're now counting up. We've had 483 people saved in representation of this church. Not all of them happened at this church. Some of them, uh, whenever my mom went down to Peru, they had about 70 people saved down there. And because we sent her, we financially gave money into that. Then we counted those 70 souls because we have a portion of that in, in that number, 483. Many of you have gone door to door or talked to people at your work or prayed with people out in the, in the world, at your business, uh, at the lake or whatever. And people have been saved. Those, those souls are listed right there. And you're about to see a great big jump. Um, I got a report today. Uh, some people went on a missions trip. Some people from our church sold money into that missions trip. And what was the, was the three? What was the number? Three hundred and five people were saved in, in that missions trip. We're gonna add that three hundred and five numbers. Fix the jump. That's gonna put us over seven since, since April twenty eighteen. <laughs> over seven hundred souls saved through the efforts and the work. Maybe not directly, but at least because we are being obedient to the Father and seeking the face of the Father. That's the reason we turned it over. We're going to break a thousand very, very quickly. Get ready for the ride of your life. I, 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 we're going to break that thousand, then we're going to break two thousand, then we're going to break three thousand. Get ready, get ready, get ready. We are on the hot pursuit of the Father and to see souls saved. So please pick up the burden. Please continue to pray. Please see. Please continue to fast. Please continue to expect the Father to pull people out of darkness and bring them into the light. And uh, I'm going to do something tonight that makes me nervous. The Lord knows this pulls me out of my comfort zone. But at through about 3.30 this afternoon, the Lord gave me an entirely different for tonight than what I have ready. Normally, I like to be prepared for Wednesday night to the nth degree. Sunday morning, oftentimes the Lord just changes my sermon and I just run for it. But on Wednesday night, I am normally got all my eyes dotted, my teeth crossed, and I know exactly where we're going to go as long as the Spirit don't want Jake, me, and Jackie. And so tonight, it's going to be a little different than that. But the Lord gave me a warning. And so I'm going to follow that warning for the church. And so just bear with me tonight as I do that. I really feel like that this is a specific warning, not just for our church, but for the body of Christ for the day and age that we're living in. I take, I was actually at Richard and Martha's house. Uh, and if you ever go rich, visit with Richard and Martha, you know Richard will quote the word, quote the word, quote the word, man, he'll, he'll, he'll preach to you. And uh, so we were sitting there talking, and he said something, and instantly the Lord downloaded this. 
And I'm like, I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go home real quick. I just gotta head to the house. And so this is the warning. And I'm just gonna uh, start it out this way. How many of you know about the Antichrist? Raise your hand if you know anything about the Antichrist. Tell me what you know. What do you know about the Antichrist? Hey, you're gonna have a lot of money. I, I never, yeah, I'll agree with that one. Fat. Who said he's fat? Bad. Oh, I thought somebody said he's fat. Uh, he's worse than that. One? <laughs> he's bad. He's gonna be bad. What else do you know about the Antichrist? He's gonna be in a powerful position. What else do you know? David? And he'll be the guy, we'll all know who he is because he'll be the guy that will come up with the seven-year peace treaty. He's going to yeah, come out with that seven-year peace treaty. Like, yeah, that's right. And half years, that'll be the guy. That'll be the man. Yeah. And then. Yes. Yeah, he's not going to come. Guys, y'all do know the Antichrist is not going to be wearing a red suit with pointy ears and a fork and tail. Right. Right. That's, that's right. not what he's going to look like. And then he's going to be killed, and Satan is going to enter his body. And that's when hell and destruction, because Jesus said in the word, if I don't stop it, there will be no flesh left. left alive. What he's else left. you know? He's a liar. He's a liar. What else you know? Nobody's getting the easy stuff. He's Melissa. Associated with the false prophet and the beast. Yeah. Associated with the false prophet and the beast. Moses exalted. Above all that is called God. Yes. Man, y'all are y'all are doing really good. Y'all are giving all the really <laughs> deep stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm just gonna give the easy stuff I expected, okay? <laughs> Here's the easy stuff I expected. He's gonna set up a one world government. He's gonna make everybody take the mark of the base, six six six. Well, yeah. He's gonna set up a one world religion. Yeah. 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 That's the three easy things. I mean, normally if you ask anybody, especially outside the church, what do you know about the Antichrist? They're gonna say six six six. Right? <laughs> And then he's going to say, oh, he's going to set up a one-world religion. And then he's going to set up a one-world government. And even people not in the church knows about that. Melissa said something, though, that I want us to throw out there. And it's something that we don't often speak about when we're talking about the Antichrist. And it's the, the, the warning that the Lord gave me for us for tonight that we have to look at. There, is, there are more actors on the stage in the book of Revelations than the Antichrist. And there is a false prophet that is going to arise. Now, I believe God has shadowed out that the spirit of the Antichrist has been alive and active and operating on the earth since all the way to the back of time to the time of Christ. Amen. The yes. scripture says yes. many Antichrists has yes. have arisen. Yes. What's that mean? Antichrist, opposite of Christ, enemy of Christ. There's over the centuries, there's been many people who have risen up and said, I am the Christ. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. They weren't the Antichrist, they weren't the 666 guy, mm -hmm. but there's always been a spirit of the Antichrist. Yes. But it's been it's been out there in the world. But there's also the spirit of a false prophet. And I, the, here is the warning for the church today. There is going to be a spirit of a false prophet that is going to arise in the earth. And that spirit of that false prophet is going to be exceptionally deceptive. He's going to be exceedingly difficult to divide whether he's good or evil. He's going to be exceptionally good at his job. And he's going to even deceive many of the very elect. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just telling you what the scripture says. Yeah. The things a false prophet is going to do. Let me give you a couple of scriptures. Uh, and we're going to, uh, I didn't, Melissa, don't have a, she didn't know I was going this direction. I did not go this direction, but now I'm going this direction. So just look at Matthew. Somebody turn to Matthew chapter 24. We'll just do it this way. Just jump over to Matthew chapter 4. We're going to, from Matthew chapter 4, we're going to look at, uh, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 24, we're going to look at verses 24 through 27. While you're looking that up, oh wow, that's quick. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets. Everybody say false prophets. False prophets. Now what, what designates a false prophet different than a true prophet? He's not a God. He's the truth. He's the truth. He's not of God. What else? The Word. The Word. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. Sister Yvonne is saying back there, and she's saying the difference between a false prophet 
And a true prophet boils down to this one thing, the Word of God. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let's go back right here. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders. Everybody say signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Now, how many of you knew that there was going to be a guy that is not going to be following Jesus Christ. He's not going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. He's going to actually walk in the way of life. He's going to walk in the way of darkness. He's not going to be of truth. He's going to be of a lie. And he's going to do signs and wonders. He's going to perform miracles. He may even raise the dead. He may do things that will actually boggle your mind. He may actually make sick children well. He may actually turn water to wine. He may actually turn water to blood. He may actually call plagues down on the earth. He may actually do all of those things. And not be right. And we're living in the day and age. I will tell you right this minute, I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that we are very close to the rapture. Yes. I would have told you that in 1988. I would have told you that in 1978. I believe here right in now in 2020, we're exceedingly close. If you're just watching what's going on in the world, we're right at the, I mean, it, it has to be within a click of the eternal clock to be that close when you look at what's going on in the Middle East, the United States, what's going on around the world. And in that, if that is the case, then the Antichrist must be alive somewhere on the earth. Right. Yep. Yep. The Antichrist will not be a six-year-old. The Antichrist won't be a ten-year-old. The Antichrist won't be a fifteen-year-old at the day of the rapture. The Antichrist has to be a man of sufficient age and influence and knowledge at the moment of the rapture to immediately step over the world stage, take the reins, and within three and a half years be able to walk into the Jerusalem, into the third temple, sacrifice a pig on the altar, and set himself up as God on the earth. Amen. What he's going to do. Yeah. So that means if you say to me, if the rapture's that close, is the Antichrist alive on the earth today? And I will tell you, at minimum, at least the man who will be possessed by the spirit of the Antichrist to fulfill that role is alive on the earth today. That's right, that's right. That tells me the spirit of the false prophet must be alive on the earth right now. That's right. Yep. The spirit of the false prophet has to be alive on the earth right this minute. Now, it actually says that he's going to do signs and wonders in so much. This is the scripture that Helen alluded to just a second ago. He's going to be on the earth and he's going to be doing so much that if it were possible, he would deceive even the very elect. That means he possibly be able to deceive Assembly of God people that attend Bell's Chapel Assembly of God Church. The elect. Now, so we have to have a way to beat that thing. That's the, That elect means chosen, selected, and favorites. Give me verse 25. <laughs> Behold, I have told you before it's going to come. Verse 26. Wherefore it shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. Don't go. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Don't believe it. Verse 27. For as lightning comes out of the east and shines under the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. This guy is going to come, and people are going to tout him. They're going to say, he's doing signs and wonders and miracles, and everything he's doing looks good. But here's the warning. There has to be a mechanism for the elect to not be deceived by the false prophet. I believe that spirit is alive. If the Antichrist is alive today, the spirit of the false prophet must be alive in the earth today. And the answer is exactly what Yvonne said just a second ago. If we, as those who are chosen and elect of God, are going to survive the last day, and we're going to be able to look at who might walk onto the world stage, the church stage, or any other part of the... He might show up in New York next week, and he may be at a rally somewhere, and he may actually do a sign and a wonder and a miracle, and CBS News be there to record him the next day, and it go worldwide. And people might say, look at him. He looks right. He sounds right. He's doing right. But at the end of the day, if we are going to survive the last days 
and the deception of the false prophet, the only way you are going to survive it is if you have the word of God hid in your heart. It will be the only divining thing that will separate the false from the true, the right from the wrong, the good miracle from the bad miracle. Amen. Notice it says, even the very elect. Let's jump over to Matthew. Uh, we're still in Matthew chapter 24. Jump me up to verse 5. Matthew, jump up to verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they shall do what? Many people are going to rise up, and they're going to say, I'm doing this. I'm either the Christ, or I'm doing this in the name of the Christ. And what's going to happen to lots of people? They're going to be deceived. Now jump into verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise, and what are they going to do? They're going to, how are they going to deceive many? What's the false prophet going to do? Signs, wonders, miracles, attract a crowd, look the part. He's going to preach some of the truth in an effort to gather the most number of souls. He's going to preach things that look right, sound right, and seem right, but don't do right. right. Yeah. The scripture plays says this is going to happen in the last days. Now, uh, just, uh, let's jump to Revelations. I'm going to, we're just, I'm going to jump you all over the place. I, in that download, the Lord gave me about 20 scriptures. So we're going to look at all 20 of these scriptures tonight. And my whole point is this. If you are going to make it in the rapture, if you are going to survive the last days, if you are going to be able to stand the onslaught of the false prophet and not be offended at those who tell you the truth, and listen to the truth and follow the truth, you're only going to be that person if you have truly ingested the word of God. That's right. You can't That's in your right. house and be around it. You can't sleep with it under your pillow. You can't carry it with you. You can't just sit under the word of a preacher. You are going to have to open that thing you're sleeping on That's top right. of. Open That's that thing right. you're carrying back and forth through your work. Get it off the dash of your car. Open it up and begin to read the word of God. I, this is the warning that the Lord has dropped in my heart so hard this afternoon. There is only going to be one rescue for the saints of God. And it is going to be to uh, the ability to divide rightly the word of truth in the last days. False prophet, the spirit of the false prophet, will be exceptionally good at twisting. Yes. He'll be exceptionally good at turning. He'll be exceptionally good at half truths, part truths, and some truths. Yes. He will preach 15 sermons dead on so he can preach the 16th sermon of dead. Let me get you another scripture. Revelation chapter 13, verse 13. I'm sorry. Revelation chapter 13, verse 13. And he wonders so that he might make a fire come down from heaven and earth in the sight of men. Tell me how many people do you know in the Bible that call fire down from heaven? Elijah. 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 Who else called fire down from heaven? Uh, Moses. Moses had fire come down. Elijah. So Elijah, one man. We've got scripture context that one man, Elijah, called fire down from heaven. Now the scripture also says, now think about this, that before Jesus would come, the spirit of Elijah would rise. And Jesus himself said, the spirit of Elijah has already come. Actually says Elias, but he was talking about Elijah. The spirit of Elias has already come. And that was John the Baptist. This scripture alludes to me that there will be someone who is along the order of similar to a man like Elijah who will do signs and wonders and will even call fire down from heaven and he will do that like Elijah predicated the coming of Christ in the body of John the Baptist, in the, in the person of John the Baptist. So will there be this false prophet who will even be so good as to call fire down from heaven. And he will do that as a forerunner to the Antichrist. 
And he'll do that in an effort to, to confuse the church, to deceive the church, and to blind the church, and to get the church to follow him like a pied piper to the feet of the Antichrist, where he will convince them that this man is God and get them to worship him because they saw the signs and wonders. They saw the fire come down from heaven. They saw all these things happen. This is the power of the false prophet. Revelation chapter 19 verse 20. Revelation chapter 19 verse 20. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. What did the false prophet do? Why? 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 Over and over and over. False prophet miracles. False prophet miracles. False prophet miracles. Why is the false prophet and miracles tied together so strongly? Because Jesus did that. Because Jesus performed miracles. What influential? Hell, what you say? Jesus. I was saying the same thing. Jesus did it. He Who is he trying to deceive? The world. The very elect. Yeah. Think about it. There's no need to deceive those who have the mark of the beast right. oh. written across their forehead. There's no reason to deceive those who get the mark of the beast on the back of their hand. There's no reason to deceive those who gladly and willingly follow and pursue a false way, a lying way. Why? You don't have to call a bit of fire down from heaven to get someone who's living in the depths of sin to sin. Why is the false prophet? Why do I read it over and over and over? Miracles calling down fire. Why? What is it? What's going on? Who is the target? And I'm going to tell you the target are those of us who claim Jesus Christ is our King and our Messiah. And the target for those before the rapture will be to get the church of the living God to the false way and a lying way and to get us to become deceived so that we accept a lie and embrace a lie and follow a seducing spirit. And I'm here to tell you as a warning today, please hear me, I'm giving you a warning. The only way you are going to survive the onslaught of that is if you pick up the Word of God, Amen. open the Word of God, read the Word of God, and get the Word of God in you. You cannot be around it. You can't rub up against it. And you will not sit under enough preaching of it to get you to be uh, 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 immune is the word I'm looking for. There is no immunity from the deception of the Antichrist except the Word of God. That's it. It's going to be the only immunity. Now, uh, did you go to Revelation chapter 19, verse 20? We're already there. Uh, and deceive them that had to receive the mark of the beast. Now, let's jump over to, uh, mm, we already read that one. I want to go to, uh, let's see. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 through 24. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 through, th through 24. Then I'm going to go to some Old Testament scriptures. Oh, First Timothy, I told you I wasn't organized tonight because this was coming too late, hot off the press. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Then we'll go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 through 24. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. What's that say? Now, the what? Speak of the expression. These latter days that some will do what? We're in the faith. What happened to them? They departed where? From the faith. They were in the faith. Now they're out of the faith. They were saved. Now they're not saved. They were rapture ready. Now they're not rapture ready. They were watching. Now they're blind. Right? What got them there? What happened to them? Look, look real close. And they departed from the faith, giving heed to what? Seducing spirits and the doctrine of devils, which came from where? Came from the false prophet. It came from the one who stood before the masses and did signs and wonders and miracles. He did things to convince you that the word that he was speaking was truth when it was a lie. And he then began to speak a seducing song that said, good is evil and evil is good. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it creates a seducing spirit that draws people from the faith, out of the faith, turn their back on God, follow their pernicious ways, and find themselves in utter destruction. There has to be a remedy. against seducing spirits. There has to be a remedy against doctrines of devils. Yes. Yes. Amen. And it has to be what Bruce was holding in the air. There is a remedy in these last days. And this is a this is a dire warning that's rising up in me tonight to say to the church of the living God, you must open up the Bible that you have been given. You must begin to ingest the word of God for we're right at the moment where if we do not, we will follow our itching ears and we will keep to ourselves false prophets. Scripture says teachers. He thinks to themselves teachers having itching ears, making their God their belly, and, and, and following a false way. How did that all start? They got deceived. They grabbed a hold of the seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils because they did not have the word of God in them to the place that they could discern good and evil. The ability to discern good and evil. How do I know if that guy's telling me the truth? How do I not? How do it sounds good, but is it good? It sounds alive, but is it alive? It sounds like life, but is it death? How do we come to the place that we can determine those things? And I'm going to tell you, the Word of God will be the only immunity to those things. Pastor? Yes. I'd like to ask. If we've got the Holy Spirit in us, he's the one, I mean, that would protect us and guide us and bring us in all truth because he's been doing that to us for years. Yes, the Holy Spirit, the scripture does say that there is, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, tongues, interpretation, tongues, prophecy, gift of healing, gift of miracles, gift of faith, and <laughs> discerning of spirits. Yes. And I'm going to tell you that's exactly true. That the Holy Ghost, there is an avenue inside the Holy Ghost for the discerning of spirits. Yes. To make it where you will be able to turn a truth from a lie. But I'm also going to tell you that you must be very cautious. Yes. Because I shadowed out within me that the elect are filled with the Holy Ghost. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was fixing to say. And, I will, and, and, and that's what makes them elect. And so if we, just because we are filled with the Holy Ghost and are able to speak in tongues, take our Bible and set it to the side mm -hmm. and say, I don't have anything to worry about because I have the Holy Ghost in me and I don't need to put out all that effort. I don't need to read. Then I think what we do is we set ourselves up for a false spirit of the Antichrist to rise up as the false prophet within us and cause us to believe a lie because he's going to do Tongues, interpretation of tongues, signs, wonders, miracles, and do those things, and we're not going to have the word even though we have the Holy Ghost. Amen. Right. Yeah. I, I have my mother <coughs> sent me this packet the other day. This is a packet of uh, prophecies that I, I got compiled. It's and a lot of these have been around since 400 A.D. Wow. And I was reading through them. Prophecies of the last days. There was actually a guy in 400 A.D. I had never read, it, uh, read a prophecy that actually prophesied about submarines and airplanes. Hmm. Very interesting. Wow. Over and over and over and over. In all these prophecies this guy put together, I found a thread. And the thread was this. There's coming a day of deception. And if you don't have the word of God in you, you're not going to make it. Over and over and over from 400 AD up till now, these, this little packet of compiled prophecies. And the Word of God will bring you out. And the Word of God, make sure you know the Word of God. Do not be deceived by the voice. Do not be deceived by the miracles. Do not be deceived by what you see. But make sure you have the Word of God in you. Otherwise, you're not going to make it. There is a spirit of deception. Yeah. The Bible says where it happens. He's a half of the earth here, let him hear what the Spirit yep. is saying to the churches. But it also talks about people being dull of hearing. Right. And because of things that we see going on around us and how we understand it with our eyes, and we're not listening to the Spirit of God, 
But the cat and dog's here. We can hear it. And, Melissa. So, two things. One, um, I think it's Isaiah 48. Yes. So yeah. if we don't have the word of God, which is our armor, because the sword of the spirit is the word of God, if we don't have that, and the majority of the armor of the Ephesians armor is pieces of the word, the belt of truth, feet shod with just like you teach about the armor. If we yes. don't have that, if we I mean if we don't have the word now, today, we're not going to be able to defend ourselves against deception. Never mind That's right. Talking. If we don't have it now, and I'm gonna I, I mean I'm just gonna be playing tonight. All right. We live in a day and age where we're not 100% certain about what's sin and what's not now. That's the deception. We live in a day and age right this minute when churches are splitting over stuff that five years ago, ten years ago, no question. And now, five years later, ten years later, we're in a day and age where the denominations are splitting over things that aren't to be played. What's happening? There is a spirit of the false prophet that's beginning to arise, and there are some signs, and there are some wonders, and there are some miracles. There are some things that look good. There are some things that sound good. There are some things that seem good, and the world is embracing those things that look good, seem good, sound good, calling, and they begin to call good evil and evil good. How is it even possible for that to take place? And I'm going to tell you it only takes place in biblical illiteracy. Yes, yes, Amen. yes. You, you. Whenever the church world has laid its word down, the world becomes, the church becomes willing to ingest anybody who can stand up and be charismatic and say good words and sound like they're doing good and tout love and tout acceptance and tout tolerance. Whenever Jesus himself said, I came to bring a sword upon the earth. The word is a sword of sharp and mighty, dividing the sunder. Yes. When Jesus himself, the word itself said, come out from among Mom, them and be separate. separate. Yeah. Not inclusive. Yeah. Oops, I said that out loud on the camera. That's, that's, that's good. good. <laughs> that's good. DJ. He just made it popular. Yeah. Well, what was in the shadows to the light? Right. And and well, let me just let me bump you into some more scripture. Can I do that? Yeah. Amen. I, and I'm going to do it pretty quick. Okay. I want to go to Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses one through four. Yeah. All the way back to Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses one through four. Scripture about a false prophet. If there arises among you a prophet, dreamer of dreams, and gives thee a sign or a wonder, yeah. what did he do? He had a dream. Mm -hmm. What did he do? He had a vision. And then not only did he stand up and declare, I have a dream and a vision, but he did some miracles to back it up. Yeah. Go to the next one. And the signs of the wonders come to pass, wherever he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Verse 3. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God has, is proving you. Yes. Yeah. Mm. What? He just said there is going to be false prophets that are going to arise. And they're going to stand up and declare to you, I saw a dream, and I had a vision. And they're going to do signs and wonders, and their dreams are going to come true, and their words are going to come true, and they're going to use that platform to encourage you to follow another way, to follow another God, to come away from what you know as truth, to step away from that truth and embrace another truth. 
won't necessarily have you follow another God. They're not necessarily going to come and ask you to change the God that you worship from Jesus to Baal or from Jesus to Confucius. What they're, what they're going to do is let's redefine your Jesus yeah. a total other way. Yeah. Yeah. If a false prophet arises with great swelling words and dreams and visions and new interpretations of the words and even does signs and wonders and asks you to follow another Jesus, yeah. know this. God is proving you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Read the next verse. Oh, hang on. To know, he's proving you to know whether or not you love the Lord your God. Now verse 4. With all your heart and with all your soul. Think about it. A false prophet. Think about the day and age we're living in. And how many big name TV preachers are starting to swallow the modern day Kool-Aid. Yeah. 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 Changing the truth of God into a lie. Yeah. Following a convenient way instead of a straight and narrow way. Right. Following a popular way instead of an unpopular way that makes less money. Right. Yeah. Prophesying for ill-gotten gain. So that they might have the largest congregation with the largest offering. And so they prophesy in that way and they ask the people to serve or follow a lesser Jesus, to leave some of that Jesus behind and serve another Jesus. This scripture says when that happens, what I'm doing is I'm testing my people to see if the elect know who I am. How will the elect know who he is? Because they have embraced the word of God. Amen. We must, if we are going to survive the last days, we must know what the Word of God says and what it is. How am I going to do that? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9, 10, and 11. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all powers and signs and lying wonders. Did know those so many scriptures about this, did you? Verse 10. And with all deceivableness, and unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth. Amen. What's that? <laughs> I'd be saved. What would have saved them? The, word. the love of the truth. What is the truth? The word is truth. Yes. And power. Yes. And because they had a form. Why did they have a form of godliness and deny the power of their own? Because they had a form of the word within them. How was it that they were deceived? They had only a form of the word. And they were willing to accept leadership over their lives and ministering in and leading them who were willing to compromise the totality of the word and embrace a piece of the word yeah. or another man's interpretation. If that arises, and you hear me, it is going to arise in every denomination, in every community, and there's going to be an opportunity for this worldwide. The spirit of the Antichrist is here, and the spirit of the false prophet is working. Yes. And if the church of God is not going to be deceived, and is not going to fall to the siren song of the elect, yes. uh, excuse me, of the seducing spirit that's chasing the elect, we're going to only stand if we have the word of God. We're going to only know how to say, whoa, 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 whoa. That guy just absolutely prayed for a man without a leg and a leg grew out. Then he stood up and asked me to compromise the word. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chad, those churches are... That, that's that's yeah. the reason over in Acts, the, the, the Bereans, whenever they heard Paul speak, mm -hmm. then they would go home and they would search the scriptures to see if what he was saying was true or not. Yes. We have to be the same way. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The churches are already changing yeah. and letting sin come into the churches. That's right. They are. They are. And we have to stand against it. I want to jump to Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. And, it, and, and I'm just I'm spending a whole Wednesday night service telling you, read your Bible, 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 read your Bible. Read your Bible. Amen. That's all I'm telling you all night. All I'm telling you is, is you have the absolute privilege Amen. of yeah. what I believe is living in the terminal generation. Yeah. The privilege. Not the disadvantage. No. Did you hear what I just said? The privilege of living in the terminal generation. Generations before us have longed to see the rest of place. Yeah. Yeah. We have, if I'm right, 
And Sister Yvonne and Brother John get to see the rapture. I believe it. If we get to see the rapture together, that means we're the terminal generation. And that's a glorious thing. Because I also get to see this great last day's revival. I need to be inoculated against the wickedness and the evil that might seduce and the doctrines of devils that might come in. I don't want any of that to see us. And, uh, and I can do that in this terminal generation. That's the most phenomenal generation I ever get to live in if I am full of the Word of God. Amen. Yes. It is a shot of inoculation. The Word of God. But it's going to be the only way you're going to make it. If you reject the Word, you're not going to make it. Let's look at this scripture in, uh, where did I send you to? Jeremiah 23. 23. Jeremiah 23. You didn't give me a verse. Oh, 25 through 29. Jeremiah 23, verse 25 through 29. I have heard what the prophets said. The prophets lie in my name saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own hearts, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. The prophet that has a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. Now, this is very important. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Yeah. 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 It says in these last days there are going to be false prophets, but there's going to be real prophets. There's going to be some false, there's going to be some real. And what is the wheat to the chaff? Now, here's a scripture that's fixed to pop up that we pull out of context all the time. What's the context right here? False prophets, true prophets. Peepers, dreamers, liars, deceivers. That's the context. Hit me with the next verse. What's the context? Verse, is not my word like a fire? Yes, he's a consuming fire. What does the fire do to the chaff? Burns it utterly away. In the last, in that day when there was false and there was real, where there was wrong and there was right, where there were man dreams and God dreams, man visions and God visions, lying visions and true visions, when all of that existed, how was it, and it's, and it's here right now, how was it even possible to be able to discern what was right, what was wrong, what's a true vision, what's a wrong vision? And the answer is this is not my word like a fire. Yes. yes. Yes, that burns away the chaff and like a hammer that breaks the stone. Yes. We've got to have the word of God in us. Yes. We've got to have the word of God in us. There's, there is a spirit of deception that is in the world now, growing every single day, more and more and more and more. And if we do not have the truth of the word of God in us, you will find yourself deceived by someone somewhere, somehow with some power and pull. They're going, to do, they're going to do what looks good, say what seems good, but at the end of the day, they're going to ask you to follow a different way yep. than the way of truth. They're going to ask you to accept things you know you shouldn't accept, do things you know you shouldn't do, follow men because they advance their own name, not the name of Jesus Christ. Right. Yeah. Drawing away disciples, and that's going to be the way of it. Now, uh, just quickly, finishing up... <laughs> I want to remind you a couple of things. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 says strong meat belongs to those who have, been exor have, have had their senses exercised by reason of use to discern good and evil. Yes. This is the using of the word of God in the last days. It goes along with that Holy Ghost that Helen brought out long ago. This is where I was going to tie that in. That Holy Ghost, that spirit of discernment yeah. in me has to be tied to the exercise of the Word of God. Yeah. They cannot dwell and survive independently. That's right. Spirit of discernment detached from the Word of God will actually become a spirit of divination. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. yeah. When you try to detach, discern, detach discernment from the Word, it will become divination. A spirit of a lie. If we are going, to, if we have the Word of God in us, then the Spirit of the Holy Ghost can dwell in us. 
by that spirit of discernment. And then I can begin to become discerning, knowing good and evil by reason of use. And how, what does the use mean? The use means this. I have learned to look at the fruit of a man's mouth and run it up against the word of God and weigh it in the balance of the truth of the word of God. And if it don't line up by exercise of effort, I've learned how to judge the fruit in righteousness. Right, yes. Look at what a man says. More than his charisma, more than his miracles and signs and wonders, but look at what he's pushing, look at who he's touting, look at the name that he's advancing, and look at how he's living. Yeah, true. The scripture uh, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 says, Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. I will be able to discern the false spirit of the false prophet by trying the spirits. What does it mean to try the spirits? To try the spirits means run it up against the word of God. Run it up against the word of God. Also, I'll give you another one. There's one more that says, let's say it's the other scripture. Oh yeah, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 29. One prophet should speak and the other should judge. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The world is going to tell you, don't judge me. Right. Yeah, they're doing it. Right. I'm going to tell you something. Everybody that's telling you don't judge me has already revealed to you the fruit of their mouth. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Because the instant you tell me don't judge you, you've already told me your fruit is evil. Yep. Right. Yep. And you don't want me to know that your fruit is evil. The Bible says I'm supposed to stand up before you and say, judge me. Yeah. Yeah. As a prophet of God, I am supposed to stand up before you and say, I will prophesy and you judge. I will speak and I will be honorable to my king. But you judge my words according to the living God. It is your job to judge my fruit. If my fruit is good, I am good. If my fruit is evil, I am evil. Amen. And if I'm standing up and telling you, don't judge me. Yeah. Already I've shown you my fruit. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Brother Chad, the Bible says, he that is spiritual judges all things. Yes. Over in uh, uh, Thessalonians, I think it is, where it says, about to despise not prophesying, it also says to prove all things and hold fast that which is good. you got to prove it. And you got to judge it. You better. Prove all things. Yes. And hold fast to good. Yes. And what is not, how am I going to do that? Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best. I don't know if I'm doing a good job, but it's not to encourage you. Read the book, 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 read the book. Read the book. I'm going to put this out there. Your eternity yes. in the terminal generation, yeah. immediately before the rapture, when the level of deception is going to increase and get stronger, and there are going to be miracles and signs and wonders that would lead you away from God, not to God. Right. There's going to be true prophets, still giving a true voice, but there's going to be the voice of the false prophets. Your scripture, that book is going to be the only thing that's going to save you. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Well, uh, <clears throat> first, first Corinthians 10, 13. No yes. temptation taken you for such as is common to man, but God is faithful who will with the temptation make a way of escape. Yeah. There's, uh, there's only one thing in the Bible that I read that hell cannot beat, and that's the church. That's the right. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. So my advice to everybody is bury yourself in the church and we have Sunday school at 945. That's all right. I That's mean, right. I believe if I wanted hey, to. Hey, if you're here, I'm here. Me, I'm, here. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I ain't going nowhere else. That's right. Be here. That's a plug for Sunday school. That's a plug for Sunday school. <laughs> Our brand new educational team leader stands up and cheers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Woo. Get in Sunday school. Listen. <laughs> Because the word of God is your shield. It is your sword. And if, we, if, if we're just around it, that's not good enough. Go, yeah. John. To me, the greatest way of determining a false prophet or the false prophet 
who does signs, wonders, and miracles, he or she will never ever give glory to the anointed word. Right. Who is the Son of God? Yes. The Lord Jesus Christ. That's exactly right. Yeah. A prophet will always give honor yes. to the Master. Yes. False prophets will never give honor to the Master. The honor of the flesh. Give honor to their Master, who is the devil. Mm -hmm. And one other thing that I thought about when you started on this was we talk about the Antichrist is anti anti Jesus. Right. Satan is anti God the Father. Yes. And the false prophet, anti Holy Spirit. Right. It's like a triune being. It's a trinity. Coming against the Almighty God. And when we see that in Revelation 19, the dragon, the beast, yeah. and the false prophet. Yes. Absolutely. But Chad, I don't have any teaching that is against the cross of Jesus Christ and right. against the blood. Mm -hmm. It says that the Antichrist. The spirit of the Antichrist denies Jesus came in the flesh. Right. That's denies right. Jesus that's came right. in the flesh. So, so that's one way. If it, if, if it tells you Jesus is just a prophet, mm -hmm. it's a lie. Mm -hmm. right. If it tells you Jesus wasn't the virgin born son of God, it's a lie. Yeah. But again, how are you going to know those things? Because you've got to have your word. How are you going to survive this day and age? Exercise the word of God. Rub everything up against the Word of God. If it don't fit with the Word of God, get out of it. Get away from it. Turn it off. Turn it down. Shove it out the door. The Word of God is going to be our only banner. We are going to have to hold on to it tighter and tighter and tighter than we've ever held on to it before. We're going to have to be militant about the Word of God. Yeah. We're going to have to be. Brother Chad, this goes back to your teaching last week about being led by the Spirit. The yes. only way that we can be truly led by the Spirit is if we do have the Word of God down on the inside of us. Right. If His Word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path, yes. He will bring the light, the deceitfulness, and the, 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 the deceiving Spirit that, that's coming upon this earth. He will reveal that to us if we're being led by the Spirit. And if we will allow the Word to work on the inside of us, the Word of God will work in a, into bringing that to light. You know, 2020 is, the, is then de declared the year of you know, bringing new vision, right. you know, the fullness of the vision of God, and as long as we keep our eyes on Jesus, yep. as long yep. as we keep our eyes on the Word of God, we keep our hearts on the Word of God, then the deceitfulness of this world cannot deceive us, That's right. but That's we right. have to be led by the Spirit, and the only way to do that is to have the Word in us. You're going to have to. Watch out for people that are trying to speak flattery, smooth words, yes. and yes. simple speeches that deceive. Yes. Uh, over in Isaiah 30 and 10, I think it is, it says, prophesy smooth things, prophesy deceit. Yes. Flat Silver tongue devils. devils. Yes. Yeah. yeah. DJ. We, we've talked a lot about the written word over the years, and now this is, this is so popular. Can we rely on what is put in here? Can it can be the King James Version. Well, <laughs> yes. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, listen, guys, I read the new King James, yeah. I, I, but I study the King James. Yeah. I've had a lot of people ask me about the Passion Translation, the New English Translation. The, the, there's a lot of different translations out there, the NIV, the ESV, and I'm not going to badmouth any of them outside to tell you this. When I'm reading for reading, I read the new King James. When I'm studying, I'm studying the King James. When I'm, when I'm digging and chasing and going for that, I'm in the King James. I may pick up the American Standard. I may pick up the Amplified yeah. to do some cross-referencing. Mm -hmm. But if I'm studying, I'm studying back to the King James. <clears throat> so, and I, you know, I'm not, so I'm not going to badmouth whatever it is you're reading. But I would encourage you, when you're getting into your study, go back to the King James Amen. and build from there. Yeah. I attend a, a Bible study on Tuesday. And they use the NIV version. Yeah. And I use it for that study because yeah. that's what they read. But there have been more than one time that I 100% know that they've interpreted something wrong. Yeah, they left yeah. something out. Yeah, they yeah. did. Yeah. They yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm learning a lot. It's not that it's all. Yes. It's you know, and, and tonight, I know it's been very basic. <clears throat> but we are in, we're there. Yes. Yes. And I, man, I'm telling you, I, I just was very strongly compelled. I mean, I don't, Wednesday nights, I, like I said, I like to have eyes dotted, T's crossed, 
I've normally done way, you know, I normally come in here with six pages of notes and get through two and a half, and I came in here tonight with that mm -hmm. for Wednesday night. And all that is is just scriptures. Because the, the Lord gave me this as an urgency. Yes. Get in the Word of God. Yes. Signs and wonders are no big deal. We are. Moses walked into Pharaoh's court. Come on with that. And yeah. they, turned two, they throw two sticks down and they turn into snakes. That's right. And they turn water to blood. Turn water to blood. Yeah. I mean, signs and wonders wondered. are no big deal. I've always wondered how did Pharaoh go two down and they turn into Magicians. Magicians. Exactly what we're talking about. Spirits of false yeah. prophets. Yeah. I but that. I want you to notice there was. Two, there was three that went down to one. Yes. Because the true swallowed the false. false. Right. Right. And now watch this. Go back and read Janice and Jambres. Go back and look at the works. Mm. They would, Moses would do something, and they would do it, and then Moses would say, but at this exact specific time. It would happen. Right. And they couldn't do that. That's right. They couldn't control. They couldn't call the frogs out and then send the frogs away. They could unleash the evil, but they couldn't control what they done turned loose. That's the difference between the true and the false. If they hadn't been able to perform magic and sorcery all these years, witchcraft and all this, it wouldn't be alive today. That's right. They, they've done their signs and wonders since time began. Yeah, the false has always been there. So mm -hmm. I, I know we're already late, but yeah, no, if you take okay. the devil is a counterfeit. Yes, he, he is. He always right. has been false. Yes. That's right. Because he can't do what Jesus does. And I'm going no. to tell you guys, listen, the last word from the pastor before I shut us down for the night. He will take the almost to deceive the elect. Yeah. The almost right. The almost good enough. The almost and deceive the elect. He won't be able to take the gross and deceive the elect. You'd run from it. Right. Yeah. But he'll use the almost. Yeah. It was almost 100%. Man, he was doing good. But then all of a sudden, they started talking about this. Yeah. Man, they had signs and wonders. People were falling out around the altar. I know I heard that guy speaking in tongues. And then he got up there and started talking about allowing certain sins in the church. Yeah. What? Yeah. What was that? He used the almost. We're going to have to hold on to the fullness, not the almost. Yeah. We've got, and you're only going to do that if you get in the Word of God and be exercised in it. Amen. Exercised in it. Using it. Yes. I've seen uh, Jay said on our phone or whatever, it showed a picture of uh, a woman or something. It said, what Christian homosexuals look like. Oh, and a woman God. up on the stage dancing and stuff. They're having church. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. It's already in. It's, it's, it's there. It's That's why I'm preaching this tonight. I'm telling you. And there's no such thing as what you just said. No. no. And do you, I know that. Yeah. yeah. It's like saying a square circle. Yeah. But it is accepted. I never would have thought I would see that that in my life. The spirit of God. And many, many, many are being deceived in. Many, many, many are being deceived in. I want to. I, 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 else I lie, I have to stop because I told you last word from the pastor. Okay. I say no, I'm going to be lying. No, that's it. Right. You want to read 1 John 2 19? You can read it fast. First John. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have no doubt have continued with us. Yeah, went out from us, but they're not of us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Yeah. yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, tonight, we declare your word is true and the power to reveal. The word is true and the power to discern. The word is truth and the power to divine. The word is truth and the power to reveal. So, Father, I pray as we leave this house tonight that we will leave this house determined to ingest, to devour, to protect ourselves with the word of God within our home. To our children, yeah. for our wives, our husbands, Father, we've got to do it. I pray, Father, that the word of God rise up within us. We devour it, that it become a banner of salvation over our homes. And Father, it will become the balance in which we weigh that which seems good. And Father, we won't be the deceived elect, we'll be the raptured elect. Yeah. Because we trusted in only one thing, Jesus is King.
His word is truth and power, and his blood is more than enough. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.